this entitled mother thinks she's entitled to other people's property and then can redistribute it to her daughter. You won't believe what crazy reason she gives to justify her theft. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. First, I have a fairly decent car for it being so old. 16 year old Dodge Neon SE. And I have zero interest in getting anything different since it's reliable. It still gets great gas mileage. It's completely paid off and handles great. It's blue with a massive rust spot on the rear passenger side, just above the gas tank. But I don't care. It gives the car character, you know? Second, this story takes place in Michigan, where as anyone who lives here or has driven through here knows, the roads here suck. Potholes, uneven streets, and jagged pavement on every stretch of road you'll ever drive down. Getting a flat tire at least once in your life while living here is both guaranteed and a rite of passage. The flat tire detail is relevant. In the story we have the entitled parent, entitled brat, dealership owner, and me. I was driving through town after my shift at work and had to take a really crappy street because that's all I had available to me. I do my best to avoid potholes, but I end up striking a few anyway, and lo and behold, my rear driver's side tire takes a hit. I can feel that something's wrong with the tire, so I pull off the road into the nearest open drive I could find. Turns out I picked a used car lot and had plenty of room to inspect the damage. When I step out of the car to look at the tire, another car pulls into the lot behind me and proceeds to park on the other side. I noticed that the tire was low but not flat because fortunately that pothole only loosened the seal on the stem valve and I could fix it with the can of fixer flat that I kept in my trunk. While I'm fussing with the tire, the dealership owner comes out to greet me, most likely assuming I'm there to either trade in my car or shop around. When he sees my tire is low, he insists I, slowly, pull my car further away from the side of the road and up toward the front of the dealership building, out of safety concerns. I agree and move my car where instructed. Turns out I was being watched by a dreaded EP and her demonic spawn. Not long after I get my car moved up, the dealership owner is lending me a hand and helping me with my tire, making sure the valve was secured and that the pressure was stable. I thanked him for his help and proceeded to sit back down in my car. As I put the key in the ignition, I hear something bang against my window and look up to see a woman, the stereotypical Karen, trying to get my attention. I roll my window down to see what she wants. My bad. Yeah, what's up? Are you through yet? Am I what? Through. Are you through? Because my daughter's been waiting long enough. I look past her and see her 16 year old daughter dressed in a dark mini skirt, white tank top that showed everything, and 4 inch heels. This is February by the way. She was also wearing so much cheap makeup, you'd think she was auditioning for a role as the Joker. Waiting for what? Don't act cute. She needs her turn. You've taken up enough of our time. What are you talking about? Are you stupid? Your test drive is over. Now it's EB's turn. The entitled brat is standing behind her entitled parent, with her arms crossed over her chest and giving me a smug, wow are all you customers so stupid? type of grin on her arrogant face. Oh, I figured it out quickly and tried to defuse the situation. I wasn't on a test drive, I own- I said get out. This is my car. No it's not. I just saw you pull back into the lot. We were behind you the whole time. So don't try to lie to me. I wasn't. You didn't even go inside the building to sign the papers, so I know you're lying to me. You didn't buy this car, you're just being a stubborn little- No, this is my car. I have the registration- What the frick is wrong with you? Get out now. No, this is my car. No it's not. My daughter wants it and I'm going to buy it for her right now. She tried to pull open my door but thankfully I locked it when I got inside. Give me the key! Before I had the chance to say anything else, she reached through my window and made a grab for the key in the ignition. The key that was on a key ring with my apartment key and four other keychains. So clearly, not the dealership's key. When she tried to pull it out, I grabbed her arm and pushed her back. Get away! You little bee! You just assaulted me! I quickly roll up my window and I'm ready to turn over the engine and drive off when I see the dealership owner returning. 
Ma'am, what's going on? She just assaulted me. Call the police. She attacked me because I told her to let my daughter have a test drive. And now she's trying to steal the car? The dealership owner looks at me. Looks at my worn out, dirty car. With the faded bumper stickers on the trunk. And gives the woman the classic, Are you serious right now? Stare. Ma'am, this car isn't for sale. This is her car. No, it's not. Until she signs their papers, it's not hers. And my daughter wants to drive it. She just got her license, and I promised her I'd get her a blue car. This is the only blue car in the lot. It is not. There was another blue car parked behind her. And yes, her 16-year-old daughter, who just got her license, was going to test drive a car in heels. Ma'am, this car isn't mine to sell. It already belongs to her. No, it doesn't. I saw her drive the car onto the lot, and I saw you telling her to pull up to the building. Stop trying to lie to me. She had a low tire. She pulled off. Why won't you let my daughter have a turn? She deserves her turn. Is it because my daughter isn't all dressed up like this bimbo? Note what the daughter was wearing. And I'm wearing blue jeans, tennis shoes, a baggy shirt with Kirby Nintendo on it, and a green jacket over top. The only skin visible is on my hands, neck, and face. Ma'am, stop. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. No. My daughter needs this car. I promised her. And all you're doing is wasting my time. I'm asking you nicely to leave before I call the cops. You do that, and I'm telling the cops that this bimbo assaulted me, pushed my daughter, and that you're selling stolen cars. Now give my daughter this car, right now, or else. She actually said, or else. Like a cartoon villain. Ma'am, leave. This is ridiculous. She pulled her phone from her purse and proceeded to call the cops herself. You're going to regret being so disrespectful to me. All you had to do was sell me this car, but no. You decided that this bimbo was better than my daughter. My daughter deserves this car. I know I'm not in the wrong, but I'm still nervous. I look at the dealership owner through the windshield, and he gives me a look that says everything will be fine. Watch this. About five minutes later, a patrol car pulls up, and the officer approaches the dealership owner. Before he even has the chance to ask any questions, the entitled parent starts shrieking at him at full volume. I want that bimbo arrested. She assaulted me. And my daughter. And she's trying to steal my daughter's car. The cop is unfazed and just looks at me, then over to the dealership owner without blinking. Hey, he mentions the dealership owner's first name. Is that true? Not a word of it. And if you want, you can check the lot's security cameras. He uses the cop's first name. The EP is fuming, and the entitled brat is just rolling her eyes, like we were boring her or something. Why don't you believe me? You're not seriously going to take her word over mine. Just look at her. Ma'am, I need to get both sides of the story. Now you said she tried to steal? Yes, that's my daughter's car. All right, fine. That's easy enough to prove. The cop walked over to the passenger side of the door, on the opposite side from where the EP was still seething, and motioned for me to open the door. I did, and he of course asked for my ID, my registration, and my proof of insurance. It didn't take the cop long to notice my name on the license and the name of the registration, which was also dated from almost two years ago. They were a match. He just nods, hands me back my stuff and closes the door. Ma'am, that's her car. Not possible. She just got here. She couldn't have signed the papers. Why are you all against my daughter? She needs a car. Ma'am, you do realize it's a crime to file a false police report? This car isn't stolen and I seriously doubt she assaulted you. I'm going to look at the cameras and if I find that you're lying to me... The entitled parent grabbed the entitled brat's arm and pulled her along. Frick this place. All these cars are pieces of crap anyway. My daughter deserves better than anything that this bimbo would ever drive. The cop sticks around until the entitled parent leaves, apologizes to me for the disturbance, and wishes me a good day. Before he left, he says bye to the dealership owner, again calling him by his first name, and was on his way. Don't worry about her. 
I don't think she'll be back. And if she does show up again, my brother, the cop, will be back too. After slipping me a business card, joking that if I ever needed another car in the near future, he'd ensure that no crazy people were hiding in the trunk. I thanked the man for coming to my rescue, drove off, and I've been trying to figure out why my old car was so important to the EP ever since. It seems counterintuitive for the entitled person to call the police when the dealership owner was threatening to call them themselves. I was trying to think as to why this happens so often, and I think the reality is they know that what they've done was wrong. They know that they'll probably be the ones who get in trouble. So what do they think? Well if I'm the one who calls the cops, then the reason the cops are there is because of me. So they'll be on my side. I'll control the narrative of what's going on. I'm sure this happens all the time for police officers, which is why usually they're impartial and hear both sides of the story first. Unfortunately for this EP, her chance of fooling the police officer was a lot less likely, considering it turns out that he was the dealership owner's brother. So I got my hair done about a week ago, and it looks amazing if I do say so myself. I also just got a new job at Whack Donald's. So I see a lot of people. Majority are nice, however there are a few bad apples. I was busy taking orders and stuff, cause that's what I'm paid to do. I'm behind the counter when this lady comes up to me. I just took her order not too long ago. A medium number 9 meal and a 6 piece nugget kids meal. So yeah, she had a kid who was in Playland at the time. I've been told by some of my good friends that I've known for years that I low-key look like an elf or a fairy now, which is pretty cool. Anyway, so I'm just doing my job when this woman comes up to me. Let's call her Karen. Hi there. Hello ma'am, is there anything I can get for you? Most of the time when people come up to the counter, they just want some extra sauce or something like that. Oh no, it's just that my daughter really likes the color of the wig you have on. She really wants to dress like a fairy and absolutely loves the color and style of it. Can she have it? Um. Sorry ma'am, this isn't a wig. I just got my hair done at the salon over at the Walmart across the street. No, that's a wig. Nobody dyes their hair that color. Now give it to me. At this point, she had the attention of everyone who was at the front. She leans over the counter and tries to grab my hair. I jumped back to get out of her reach. That made her mad. That's when my favorite manager came over. She's my favorite because she likes anime and stuff like I do. Is there a problem ma'am? Yes, your employee stole my daughter's costume wig and is refusing to return it. I want her fired. I'm gonna run back and get some stuff to stock. Ma'am, that's not a wig, that's her hair. And we, motioning to the rest of the co-workers, all saw you try and pull her hair. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. I didn't really go to stock, by the way. That was already done. I just wanted to get out of that situation. I was standing off to the side. The customers couldn't see me, though. She starts going ballistic on the manager, saying how that's not possible. People don't dye their hair crazy colors anymore, blah, blah, blah. Eventually, the manager gets the store phone and threatens to call the police for attempted assault and for causing a disturbance. So she goes and gets her kid and leaves. And I die laughing, because how can you be that stupid? Now, what point in time did this lady think that people stopped dyeing their hair unnatural hair colors? I guess maybe it sort of started around the punk scene and maybe she just thought people stopped doing it? I don't know, but haven't there always been people who dye it, you know, pink and green and blue and different colors like that? How can you be so detached from the general public that you don't realize that that's still a thing people do? And if somebody's like, yeah, this isn't a wig, this is my hair, probably best just to believe them and awkwardly move away. So little brother is nine and was born with a heart that didn't work properly. So his heart only goes at half the beats per minute than your average nine-year-olds. So he has a cardiac pacemaker to make his heart go the average beats per minute. Keep in mind, pacemakers don't like magnets. That last bit is important later. And if the magnets are strong enough, he would pass out and have to go and get emergency surgery to get it replaced so he doesn't go into cardiac arrest. So here we go. I'm 15 by the way, so in Scotland I'm legally to take parental guidance over him. In the story is an entitled parent, dumb kid, me and my brother. My brother and I were on the bus and this entitled mum and dumb kid get on the bus and they sat behind us and guess what the dumb kid got out of his bag? You guessed it, the biggest magnets he could have bought. I asked the dumb kid if he could put them back in his bag 
so that he wouldn't harm my brother. Then the entitled mum gets all in my face and screams, What did you just say to my dumb kid? I asked him to put them in the bag so he wouldn't harm my brother. I don't care if he gets harmed or not. My child needs to have fun. Well, if you want him to have fun, why not you go up to the back of the bus? There are five free seats at the back. Mom, why can't I use my magnets? And he starts crying. Look what you did. I don't care about you or your brother. Okay, so let me stop you. My brother could die if you don't stop. No, I'm staying here. Please, can you move so you don't hurt me? So you don't break my pacemaker? The entitled mum gets in my brother's face. You can frick right off with your frickin' made-up condition. My brother starts crying. The bus driver then slams on the brakes and gets the entitled mum and the kid to fall over. And the bus driver screams, Get off the bus or I'm calling the police. The entitled mum hears the word police, picks up the dumb kid and bolts it out the door. But just after throwing the magnets at my brother, my brother has a panic attack. I was a bit shocked because I didn't know people were that stupid. The bus driver flings him out the door. I had to sit and help my brother come out of his panic attack. And the bus driver was really nice. So thank you, Mr. Bus Driver. Now, if the brother didn't explain the condition properly with the pacemaker, you could understand why somebody would be like, why are you like allergic to magnets or something? But it sounds like they did explain it would affect his pacemaker. It's just weird that somebody, because they can't see the pacemaker, they can't see the condition, that they just wouldn't believe somebody. Like if they're saying it could make them pass out or kill them, maybe believe them just even a little bit? Because the consequences of you being wrong are pretty big. But entitled parents and thinking through consequences don't really align. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.